and welcome to Community Memorial Health System Teaching Kitchen. My name is Sophie and I'm a dietitian and I have Executive Chef Brian here with me today and pediatrician Dr. Kayla Parker with me as well. Uh, welcome everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. So Chef Brian, what are we making today? First, thanks for having us. We're really excited to do this yes. for the kids. So today what we're going to do is we're going to make a whole grain waffle with an apple cranberry combo. So we're gonna start first with the apple and we're gonna blend this down. So if I could show you just Please, real yeah. quick, to make this a little easier, we're gonna take a little off the side mm -hmm. and then we're gonna take a bigger chunk and that'll lay it down flat so it doesn't weave oh, well. perfect. So in case you are having your kids, which I highly recommend we do, involve the kids as much as we can, this way it's a little safer. Right. So what you're gonna do now is you're just gonna go ahead and put the blade next to your finger and you're gonna cut nice slices. Again, you could do slices, dices, it doesn't matter really for this. It's up to you and the kids. So if you'd like to finish that. Sure. We don't need any extra patients in the hospital, so this is perfect. Perfect. Yeah, and Am if I you want to put that blade right next to the knuckle, okay. it would be perfect. Like a little smaller if you could. Because you have to think about, well, what is the person in the end going to eat? Right. And when they put it in their mouth, it just that's why either slices or dices would work. So while you're doing that, and Chef Brian, yeah. let's say your kids don't like apples or cranberries. What else could you use for the compote? That's a great question. I, I think as the kids are young and as they grow, their taste buds are changing, and so mangoes are fun. Mm -hmm. Always love strawberries and kiwis. It reminds me of a story with my youngest son. He never tried a kiwi before, and I said, hey, you should try this with the strawberries, and all of a sudden he loves it. They lit up, and it really was a fun moment for us. So It's really important for kids always to try new foods because they don't know what they don't like or what they like unless they try it. And sometimes it changes also over time. My youngest right. used to hate mangoes and now she's starting to actually enjoy them. So, you know, right. the more they're exposed, the more they can hopefully like them. So Great. what we're going to do is we're going to put the apples in here. And this recipe calls for two apples. Mm -hmm. And then in front of you, if you'd like to put in the cranberries, we can use raisins as well, right? Absolutely. Raisins are a great substitution for this. And then we have a quarter teaspoon of water. And what we're trying to do is just reduce the liquid a little bit. What will happen is that the color from the cranberries will get inside of that apples, give it a nice little sweet flavor. Ooh. That smells good. See, see what's happening with yeah. the cranberries? It's starting to reduce. It's looking Perfect. beautiful. What we're going to do here, a little TV magic, and this is what we have. This is what we'll look like when we're done. See how it colored? Nice. Yeah, actually it looks start to look like an apple pie filling. So we have three eggs. Okay. And give them just a little stir if you'd like. And Chef Brian, if we were um, baking with kids right now, would you let them do this task? Absolutely. The more we can get the kids involved, the better this process will be. Again, they like to watch, which reminds me of a story about our child, they used to sit on the counter and we used to make the waffles together, but then I started realizing, wait, get them more involved. Yes. And once they're more involved, they just light up. So it's a great question. So next we're gonna do the butter. Six tablespoons of butter for this recipe. If you want, you can use the spatula here if you want. Yes, that might be easier. And then we're gonna move into our Buttermilk, which is three cups of buttermilk. Okay. You're doing great. Thank you. <laughs> Just like kids. <laughs> <laughs> Encourage them. <laughs> and then we're going to finish with the last wet ingredient, which is the honey. Oh. In this case, it's one and a half tablespoons of honey. What's the benefits with the honey you do? Uh, well, children shouldn't have it unless they're over one year of age. And it's just, it's a natural sweetener, so it's not the refined white sugar that uh, we try to keep ourselves away from and children away from. Know that children's, their taste buds are very sensitive, so it's important that things that are sweet taste extra sweet to them, and things that are salty or bitter taste extra salty or bitter to them. So be mild with any of the seasonings you use with children. Don't want to overdo it. Right. Thank you. Exactly. So now we're going to move into the lab, the dry ingredients. So first, the cinnamon, but let's okay. smell this real quick. And this, okay. again, is another opportunity mm. for your kids to smell. Love cinnamon. It just instantly so brings good. you back to holidays. Did so you smell it, I would like to smell it. <laughs> I like the cinnamon. Thank you. Can't leave you out. <laughs> I appreciate that. So we do the cinnamon first, and that was a half a teaspoon. Okay. And next, we're going to move into the baking soda, which is a quarter teaspoon. Okay. 
And these are two leavening agents. Mm -hmm. Are you guys familiar with that? Yeah. And what it does, it basically allows things to rise. Nice and fluffy. Nice and fluffy. Baking powder is next, three tablespoons. You can implement sorry, three some, teaspoons. some science into this for the children. Yeah, Absolutely. exactly. They like to see things rise. Understand how things are right, exactly. happening. And then last will be the flour. In this recipe, we're using whole wheat flour, or you can also substitute it with all purpose. This is two and a quarter cups of flour. We give it a mix. You may want to use that a little bit or even do the spatula. For this, we're not trying to over mix it. Okay. If you over mix this batter, it won't allow it to become fluffy. It'll become very dense. We don't Similar to cornbread. Is it, you want to keep the air in there? Is that you, want, you want to allow, well the air is going to come from when you mix the buttermilk, which is acidic, mm -hmm. to the leavening agents. And that's going to create carbon dioxide actually. So okay. I really agree with your whole <laughs> point about the science. They love to see the air rise. So the difference with batters is, for example, if we didn't use buttermilk, we use milk, mm -hmm. we may end up with a crispier waffle than a fluffy waffle. Okay. Mm -hmm. And some might prefer that, but most Some of them. might. <laughs> Waffles are hard to keep uh, crispy, so when you're making them, don't stack them because they will steam up. Okay. How am so I doing? give it a little bit of mix. You're doing <laughs> awesome. We're about to put this in. Good couple more turns. Okay. You got the hard job. <laughs> Working hard, but it's going to be worth it. Now, depending on your make, your waffle maker, in this case, we're using a Belgian waffle maker, and it does have double sides, which is really fun for the kids. Um, this one's gonna call usually for six ounces to make a very thick waffle. Three to four ounces would bring it down half. But again, portion control is something I like to talk about a lot with the kids as well. Mm -hmm. So that comes in handy with that. I'm Great. doing some math also. <laughs> yeah. So, so far we've talked about math, <laughs> science, <laughs> See what else we get. Arithmetic. Some, some history. How many are we making? <laughs> so we're gonna make one right here. Okay. And this is four ounces. How many does this recipe make? This makes us for six people. Okay. And so we're gonna flip that over, lift it back up. Oh wow. That is the kids love cool. this. Yeah. One. <laughs> I love it. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. And this usually takes about three to four minutes. So what we're gonna do is flip that over and then we'll wait for our three to four minutes. What are some other, other any, any other fun points you want to bring up about the kids? Well, I think it's really important to get them involved. Like you, we talked about earlier, just the more involved they are, the more they're going to be inclined to try new foods. But I think also what's important is to sit down as a family, have meals together, and have parents eat the same thing they're making for their kids. You know, not have a separate meal for the parents, a separate meal for kids. I think it's important for kids to be open and try new things. They might not have to eat the whole thing, but at least Try a little bite, at least put it on their plate so they have the opportunity of trying. I think that's foods. a great suggestion. I would even start them at the beginning, so decide they decide get to decide what they want to eat. You go to the grocery store, you go to the farmer's yes. market, you even go to the vegetable garden, have them pick whatever they've decided, and then they're involved in the whole process. And usually they will eat whatever they've decided because they were part of the decision making process. Exactly. So that's, great that's point. super important. So what we're going to do is a little TV magic for you, because yes. this is almost done, and that's fine. But again, a lot of times the family's not all together, you want to get them together and eat. Waffles are one of those things that they don't stay crispy as long. Again, try not to stack them or over stack. But this would be the presentation that you would do. At this point, I would ask the kids to get involved. Right. So we're going to pretend that you're one of the kids. <laughs> and how would you play that? How would you like to play that for Can them? Can I get a fork? Yeah. Yes. There you go. There you go. Yes. So, if depending on what your child likes, sometimes you can put it on top or even on the side. I'm gonna make it look. Try to make it look pretty. Oh, that's what I need to. Tongs, Chris. Uh, <laughs> a little bit more effective. So I'm gonna try to make it look pretty, but sometimes you might pretty. just wanna uh, have it on the side for a child who's a little hesitant about tasting something new or different, different tastes. I think when we were making the apple, if they could taste it at that point, then they'll be more willing to taste it. And even try it raw, then a little bit cooked, and then mixed together. I definitely. agree. Well, that was great. Well, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to, to work with us in this. This is very thank exciting. You. And I really hope all the kids out there have a great time with this recipe. Yes. yes, and thank you for joining us at the Community Memorial Health System Teaching Kitchen. And look forward to more videos. And please like us and subscribe to our videos. Thank you so much. Delicious. Let's taste some things. Is this one? <laughs> yeah, this no. is, yeah, this is a good one. Here, you can taste a little bit of this uh -huh. with the apple combo. Okay. Can I also?
I don't know, give you one. It doesn't feel like it's done, but let's see. I'll let you grab one for me. Yeah, I could do a little bit. I think it's going to be great. Mmm, the crunchiness of the apple gives it the soft 